that's okay. Hi everybody, it's Maisie at The Confidence Stitch. You may or may not recognize me. This is actually my first time doing a Facebook Live, so I'm really excited, I'm a little nervous, but I hope you'll bear with me. You may or may not know that today is day nine of our 12 makes of Christmas, and the make we're showing today is our Montana mittens. Uh, we had these mittens available last year, but I'm glad to say that they're new and improved. We now have three pattern sizes available, a small, medium, and a large for adults. And we have eight kits all available on our website. There's a combination of wool and fleece and flannel, all exceptionally cozy. So I, I suggest you take a look at those. We have a limited amount of each kit, so it's important to look sooner than later. We also have the patterns by themselves available for purchase. Um, today, we're going to, I'm gonna walk you through making a mitten and I'm going to talk about how to determine your size, how to cut out your pattern pieces, how crucial seam allowance is to this pattern, how to adjust the fit around your wrist, and how to finish your mitten. So let's get started, shall we? Um, the size of your mitten is going to be determined by four things. First is the length of your fingers. Next is the width at the widest part of your hand. So that's like at the base of your thumb here, directly across your hand. And then also the type of fabric or fabrics that you're using and lastly, whether or not you're lining your mitten. So let's take a look at our pattern pieces to start. As you can see, I've got my large sitting here and this is what our small pattern looks like. And I just wanna show you how it's gonna to come to you all laid out. What we've done is we've made it reversible. So once you cut it out, it'll say, It'll have all information on the pattern piece on both sides. So here it says left hand main fabric. And then if you look at the reverse side, it says right hand main fabric. So that'll help you when it comes time to cut out your pattern pieces. So let's move on to discussing how to determine your size. I cheated and I'm pretty sure that I'm a medium, but I'm gonna show you how I came to that conclusion. You wanna start with your big piece. Um, piece C, it's called in your instructions, and lining up your wrist with the narrowest part of the pattern, you're gonna lay your hand flat and make sure that your fingers fit. This pattern piece is really for determining the length of your fingers. So you have to take into account seam allowance. My mittens today are gonna be lined, and so I wanna take into account a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and it looks like we're good there. We can also check over here. I am still within the parameters, but in terms of hand width, we're gonna figure that out on this pattern piece B over here. So the thing to do is line up the center of your hand with the top of this line. Usually the base of your thumb lines up with this notch here. So I'll line up and then I'm gonna check that I've got my three eighths on either side here. This in my opinion, is the most crucial point when it comes to size. You probably won't struggle with length, we've given you plenty of room there, but this width can be the thing that makes a mitten comfortable or not comfortable. And that is where the type of fabric you've chosen comes into play. Today we're using some really lightweight woven wools, and so bulky seam allowance is not gonna be a huge concern, however, if you're using something like a thick boiled wool or fleece or a combination thereof, you're gonna have a lot more bulk on this part of your seam allowance. And so there's a risk for it being tight. I can fit into the small pattern pretty well, but the thicker the fabric is, the more trouble that is. So if you find that you're hovering on the edge like I am, I suggest sizing up. So now that we've talked about Fabric, let's talk about cutting out our pattern. Um, in the instructions, we say it's best to sew a complete mitten, um, like the whole mitten before moving on to the next one, and that's true. However, when it comes to cutting out your pattern pieces, I suggest cutting out all your pattern pieces at the top. Because if you're dealing with a fabric that has a really distinct wrong side, like this beautiful boiled wool, um, you see it has really good right side, a really distinct wrong side. And if you cut it out and you haven't paid attention, you might end up with two of the same hand for your mitten, which would be really sad. So that's a reason to do this. But the other thing is if you're dealing with a fabric 
that has no wrong side, like the ones we're doing with today, you might not cut two of the same mitten, but you could very well sew two of the same mitten. So this will keep you from doing that. So um, what I'm now calling the Maisie method, we, I lay out all my pattern pieces, I trace them, and then I flip them over. This way I'm guaranteed to have a right and a left of everything I need. Um, you don't really need to flip over your piece C because it's symmetrical, but why not? Trace again, and then I hope you can see this, but I've traced everything out and I put an X so that I know what my right side is. You can pin it too, but I prefer to use wax. And then I've also marked right or left. Um, this is my lining fabric, and so that brings us to the next confusing part, because as you see here, we're looking at our pattern piece, it says medium, right hand main fabric, and yet here I've written an L, and that is because your lining is the reverse of your exterior. So let's look at my cut out fabric really quick. We've got my exterior fabric here, also a woven wool, and my lining fabric. Um, but we're looking at them, and <laughs> this looks like a left hand, and this looks like a right hand. Um, and that is because my exterior fabric, once I stitched it, will be flipped inside out, and then this will go inside of it, thus making a left hand. So it's just something you need to wrap your head around before you get too much, too far into your project. So we're going to set aside our lining pieces for now, and we're going to sew the exterior to start. Okay, so when we start sewing, we want to start, um, sorry, I'll go in front here. We're going to start stitching here and then go up around the thumb. Um, because it's my exterior fabric, I'm going to do a quarter inch, which is kind of right on the inside edge of my foot here. I'm going to back stitch to start. And whoop, there we go. Oops, gosh, as you see, I have crippled my thumb here, and so I'm not doing very well with the pins, but here we go. So we stitch around. It can be a little tricky when you get to the point at which you have to pivot um, because you want to make sure that you're maintaining your seam allowance. Oop, what do I got going here? Sorry. There we go. Mm -hmm. So we stitch, stitch, and then I'm going to stop where I think I'm about right. I'm going to lift up my foot and pivot and make sure when my foot's down that I've maintained that quarter inch seam allowance. And it seems that I have. So I'll continue around. And then we come to probably the trickiest part of sewing this pattern. It's a really straightforward when it comes to sewing. But when you're working on a curve, you have to go really slow. So we'll stitch and then making sure my needle's down, I'm going to lift up my foot and rotate a little bit and stitch a few more stitches and rotate again. And so it's just a little... A little arduous, but it'll give you a nice curved thumb, which is what you want in the long run. Otherwise, when you flip it inside out, it's going to be really pointy and weird, which I have absolutely done. So <laughs> you can learn from me. Um, when, as I said, we're using wovens today, but if you're sewing with a knit, you still want to use a straight stitch, which is kind of unusual when it comes to sewing with knits, but a zigzag stitch will make everything stretch, and we don't really want the mitten to stretch out of shape. So it's just something to be aware of. Okay, and then we're gonna stitch down. And um, in the pattern, so we talk about this, we have that notch that I saw before, but what we're really doing is we're stitching either a quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch past that notch. And I had drawn one on today. I'll show it to you in just a second. 
do a little back stitch here, trim, and let's go back to the table here. I hope you can see. I used pink thread, but it's oh yeah. Um, but you can see where I ended the stitch. It's lining up with my seam allowance here because when I flip it out, I want it to be straight across. You can also see I messed up here because I had a pin stuck, but this should be a straight line. So the next thing we'll do is lay it open, and that looks pretty darn good. And next, the next step is to put PC on top of my sewn piece A and B. Okay. So we're going to line up with the top here. Um, that's important because as you see on the bottom here, probably it's hard to tell because again, um, it's the same color, but this is not lining up at all. And the reason for that is the seam allowance changes um, here for your, between your pattern piece A and B, that part we just sewed. And so we made it extra long so that we wouldn't have to worry because at the end, you can just cut it and trim it so that everything's even. So you want to make sure that you're pinning from the top. This will maintain the space in your fingers as well. And we'll pin. I'm going to flip it over in a second here because I want to make sure I don't pin my thumb wonky. And also, we need to take care to make sure everything's smooth because that curve we've just sewn kind of makes it a little lumpy sometimes. The other thing is it might not line up perfectly along the edges for the same reason I've mentioned with this seam allowance changing, but that's okay. Again, we've made it extra wide so you can trim it to fit. So then we're looking over here and we're pinning. It's good to pull this out so it's as flat as can be and I pin as close as I can get to my thumb on both sides because you're gonna have to stitch around, flip, and stitch on the other side. And we wanna keep that line as continuous as possible. So I pin there so that I know where I'm gonna have to start and stop. Also, I am an avid pinner. I know that many people <laughs> think that less pins are more, but I don't, I have not yet reached that conclusion in my personal sewing life. So I apologize for the many pins. The other thing on this side, as you can see, I just folded that seam open. The main reason being when you're dealing with a thicker fabric, that'll get really bulky if you put it one direction or the other. So opening it up is the best thing to do. We're eventually going to trim this. And so it's kind of six of one, but that's how I find it to be the least bulky. So a few more pins. Over here, and excellent. Okay, now we'll get to sew so again. Back over here. Okay, so um, like as you can see, it is all uneven here, but that is okay. I'm actually going to flip it over because I want to be able to see my thumb upright. That way, I don't stitch it down accidentally. And I'm doing a quarter inch again. You wanna make sure you do a big back stitch here, almost a half an inch worth, because um, we're gonna trim it even at the end. And if you have not back stitched enough, it starts to unravel on you, which is not the end of the world because you're going to be stitching over the top of it, but it does make it harder to manage. So I am a, an advocate of big back stitching. So we stitch. Careful to remove pins this time. Coming to my open seam here. You could press it flat if you wanted to as well, but again, it's not really a, not crucial. And again, we're working on our curve. This is not, you don't have to turn 
as frequently as you do with the thumb because it's a more gradual curve. But at the top here, it starts to, can be a little uneven. So it's good to stop, pick up your foot, check. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh. Another good reason to go slow here is we're, we're going to check for any gaps in our stitching um, when we flip this inside out. And when you're working with a thick fabric like a wool, which I love to make this mitten pattern out of a really nice cushy fabric um, because that is my natural state is exceptionally cozy. Um, the stitching is a lot harder to see. And so then when it comes to trimming your seam allowance too, you're in danger of cutting a hole or cutting right through your stitching. So it's always good to be mindful during this part. It will save you some steps in the future. Okay, so now we're coming to our thumb and I'm gonna stitch carefully up to where my pin was. And then we're gonna do a back stitch. So you may, oops, I'm a little short even, but we're gonna try, I'm gonna put it back down and stitch as close as I can up to this seam I've already created on my thumb. So let me actually put that back down and give it a go. Okay. There we go. So I managed to line that up. And now I'm going to flip my thumb over. Sorry. Get caught. There we go. And we're going to do the other thing on the bottom side. This machine, this FAF, which I like a lot, um, has a really, I don't know, big back stitch for some reason. It, like, you press the back stitch button and it goes like four stitches longer than you think it will. Um, which, so it's just good to be aware of. Okay, and there we go. And stitch to our bottom, once again, doing a big back stitch as we go. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Well, that was kind of ugly, but <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. I'm sorry. I think I'm a little bit nervous, but we've got everything stitched around. And as you can see, we stitched all the way to the bottom. This is important to pay attention to because in our instructions, we talk about how if you're making a mitten that doesn't have a lining, you don't want to stitch all the way to the bottom. If you look at our pattern pieces, you can see here it says stop here for cuffed options. So I'm going to really cover cover really quick how to do the cuffed version. I pre-sewed this mitten, also a medium size, and I have it flipped inside out. This is how I'm going to want it to look in the end. And it's this nice boiled wool that doesn't really have a right or a wrong side. It kind of has two right sides, actually. So the way we're going to finish it, I want to cuff. I stitched it just like I did this one, flipped it inside out after trimming seams and checking to make sure that everything was good, no gapes around it. I also, and I just wanna cover this really quick because it's even handier with the wool. When you have something thick like this, um, you wanna make sure that you turn the thumb inside out really well. And um, I like using this two point turner. It's actually a quilting tool. You can use it to turn corners or um, make marks on your fabric. It makes a indentation there so you can see it. 
but you could use a spoon or a normal point tuner, <laughs> turner, anything you want, but this is my tool of choice, so I check that. And now I've pinned where my stitching ended and I'm going to stitch to the bottom. I did this at three eighths of an inch. I could have done a quarter inch, but I wanted it to be a little snugger because it doesn't have a lining. So we'll go over here back to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch at three eighths. Careful to back stitch here. And you want it to line up with the stitching you made on the outside. Okay. And now I'm going to do, so hopefully you can see that kind of. And I'm going to do the other side. Um, let's flip it over. I like it better this direction. Well, and so as you can imagine, I'm struggling a little bit with this thick wool, and so if you throw a lining in the mix, there's just a lot of layers to sew through, and um, all the more reason to double check yourself as you go. And back it up again. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to trim my seam allowance a little bit. Just to keep the bulk down. And flip it inside out. And there, I have this really nice cuff that is like an extension of the top. As you can see, it's all finished. And so then all that's left to do is zigzag stitch around the outside. Um, this works really well for this fabric because it is a boiled wool. It's not going to fray on you since it's a knit. What's more, the zigzag kind of gets squished into the thick fibers and so it looks really nice. So that's how you would finish it with a zigzag stitch. And you could do that by flipping your mitten inside out and then stitching along the inside is what I would do. So if it was inside out, you'd be stitching in here. Um, but we're gonna cover that a little bit when we do this one. So I'll set this aside for now. And we're back to our main mitten. Okay, so this is pretty much ready to go. I went ahead and already stitched my lining fabric. Um, what I didn't do was finish trimming all the way because I wanted to talk about that a little bit. At the beginning, I mentioned that seam allowance is crucial in this pattern. And the reason being, when you have thick fabrics like the wool I just showed you, if you put these inside one another and you try them on and you find that it's too tight here or there's some wrinkles happening, you want to give yourself the latitude to extend the seam allowance at this widest part on both your lining and your exterior fabric. So it's tricky because you have to imagine it without the seam allowance, but if you cut it too soon, then you've backed yourself into a corner. So really pay attention, especially when you have thick fabrics and woven fabrics because you don't have a lot of give. So I'm gonna finish trimming up the seam allowance on this. It's a little easier to see on this one where I'm cutting. And you could use um, pinking shears for this that would keep it from fraying, but everything is enclosed, so it's not too big a deal. Uh -huh. Also make sure you don't cut through your seam allowance. I have done that, it is annoying. It's easy to get too exuberant. And then we come to, so remember how I had you, I had you stitch this open. What you're gonna do is just cut it actually. Um, which again, makes the whole pressing it open sort of odd, but it does, it will reduce some bulk in the long run. Okay, so. I've got that all trimmed up. I could do some trimming on my 
exterior fabric, but I don't think I'm going to because it is a narrow seam allowance. And oh, you know what I've just noticed? I missed, I missed a little bit here. So I have to stitch over that really quick. Sorry, you guys. I did so well yesterday when I was practicing. And of course, here I am on camera messing it up. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna flip this guy inside out. Uh -huh. Get my thumb flipped. Use my little tool. Get everything even. You can do the same with the main part of the mitten. Um, depending on the fabric you're using, you might want to press this too, um, just because it'll keep it a little more even and flat. I have turned my iron on, but um, I'm not going to use it until the end. There's a more specific part. So anyway, now we see it inside out. Our seams look pretty good. It looks pretty round, which is nice. My thumb looks pretty good. And we're gonna put my lining on. And then I'm gonna stick my hand inside my mitten. And ta-da, I've got it all evened out. Um, it feels good, doesn't feel too wrinkly, which is nice, so it means we can kind of move on to our next step. And um, before we talk about finishing, I want to run over um, wrist adjustment. I had mentioned that earlier. I find that when you're using a heavier, sturdier fabric, you want to make it a little narrower at the wrist. I made these mittens um, for a friend of mine. They're the large size. And I went really in here because he wanted it to be a little snugger. You can see from the pattern piece itself that I made a big adjustment, even when you think about seam allowance. But that just makes it a little snugger around your hands. So all you have to do is extend the seam allowance on both your exterior and lining fabric, maybe bringing it in a little, and then that'll make it a little tighter. But that goes into how you finish your mitten as well. We could just fold this under twice and do a straight or zigzag stitch and it would be good to go. But I think I want to show off my cuff because it matches the exterior so well. So what I'm going to do instead is firstly trim so that everything is evened out. I have a little rotary color and I have a ruler somewhere, but I have lost it. So I do recommend using a ruler, but for the sake of speed, I'm just going to use the grid on my mat here. Um, again, I'm using this pinking because it will make everything or keep it from unraveling on me. So there we go. Now I have a nice finished edge. And it's time to do some pressing. So the best way I have found to finish a mitten like this, because it gets tricky, you have to <laughs> stitch in a really narrow opening. And so it's best to fold it a little bit. Um, let's see, I, I do about a half an inch. This is, looks pretty good. And oop, you can see what I was talking about where I didn't backstitch far enough and now it's unraveling on me a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna press it. I'm using a pressing cloth because this is wool and I don't want it to get too shiny on me. And it doesn't have to be like an expert pressing. It's just to kind of solidify that line for me. 
And now that I've got that, I'm going to stitch around this edge here. So let's go back over to our sewing machine. Um, you could flip this inside out. It would be, it'll make it a little easier to see um, if you're stitching on the inside, but because I know how far I pressed it, I think if I stick to a solid three eighths of an inch, I'm gonna be okay. I like to start at my side seam. And we'll back stitch again. You could pin this if you wanted to. Um, normally I might, but I don't want this to take huh, too long. We'll stitch, stitch. So we meet back around where we started. Okay. Okay. And now I can flip it again. And this will be based on how long I want my mitten to be if I try it on at this point. And I think that that cuff looks pretty good. Then to finish, all I have to do is tack it on each side here. And rather than stitch all the way around because that's really when it gets tricky. So this is my right mitten that I made the other day. And you can see, I just tacked right on the inside there and it's good to go. Ta -da. So now I have a pair of mittens. Ta -da. <laughs> I hope that you found that helpful. It can be a little tricky to wrap your mind around it the first time, so it's good to walk it through. Um, the great thing about this pattern and the kit is once you get the kit, you can use the pattern again and again with all different kinds of fabrics, be them, it could be knit or sweater, you can reuse repurpose old sweatpants, sweaters, etc. So I hope you like the pattern. I hope you like the adjustments we've made. Um, it's available for purchase on the website. And this coming Wednesday, Kate is going to show you how to make woven napkins. So we hope you'll tune in. Remember, we have three days left of the 12 makes of Christmas. So we hope you keep an eye out. And if you like this video, we encourage you to like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this and have a great day.